Hello, my sturdy friends, and welcome back to another episode of Sturdy Girl. Today, I have my longtime Instagram friend, Amber, here. We're going to talk body image, running, confidence, probably some other things and some random tangents, but thanks for being here. Of course. Thank you for having me, Jeff. This is going to be fun. I wanted to give a little introduction, I guess, calling you my longtime Instagram friend, but also (laughs) tell me a little bit about you. What do you do? How long have you been running? I am a run and strength coach. I have been running, I guess, almost 20 years. I trained for a 5K with my bestie, Jeff, who's also named Jess, in 2005 for something to do and look forward to. And after that race, I swore I was never going to run farther than that because that was so stupid. Why would anyone do that? Obviously, I have. I've run a 50K, a few marathons, plenty of halves. I am a wife and a mom. I have two teenagers, which is wild. And I work for myself. So I have clients that I train one-on-one, running and strength training. And then I do some corporate fitness where I teach classes at a business. That's awesome. I didn't realize that you've been running 20 years. And also, like, yeah. you got talked into a 5K. You probably <laughs> crossed the finish line and you're like, F this. I'm never yeah, running again. Like, and mm-hmm. then how much longer till you signed up for another race? I would probably say it was honestly a couple years. Okay. Because <laughs> then I had, yeah, like I would run, but I wasn't racing. Okay. And then I had my kids and decided to be a stay at home mom. So running was then became like my me time. Like even if I was pushing my daughter or both of them, when my son came along, it was still my time for me. And it was just nice to have that separation of something that I could do for myself. That's awesome. And then when did you start run coaching or and or strength coaching? Well, I started coaching friends first, right? I got my certification, my RRCA certification in 2012, I think. Okay. And then strength coaching. I got my personal training certification a couple years after that, I think. I decided that if I was going to go back to working once my kids were of an age where I had a few hours in my day that I wanted to go and do something that mattered and running and strength training made such a difference in my life that I wanted to be able to help someone else find that. Women, especially, because I've been strength training, I don't know, I think I started lifting when I was like 12 or 13. That's awesome. Like off and on, right? Like I didn't do a lot of it in college. (laughs) Fair, fair. (laughs) But understanding kind of the benefits it can have beyond just physical health. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's awesome. Okay. I also got into running and run coaching after a friend convinced me to sign up for a race. So I love that that's how you got into it too. I got talked into a half marathon though. My friend posted on Facebook and was like, I signed up for half. I'm freaking out. Who's going to train with me? (laughs) Oh, that sounds terrible. Me? And it was back when, I know, it was back when like people just posted random statuses on Facebook, you know, and I was Mm -hmm. like, hmm, I could, I could probably run a half. It sounds absolutely awful, but maybe I could do it. Yeah. So I messaged back and I'm like, sure, I'll do it with you. And it was like a three and a half month ramp up from like nothing to half marathon. Yeah. And I was the same way. It was a December half marathon oh. and it was like 35 degrees and raining. No. And I'm like, I'm never running again. This was the dumbest idea of my life. <laughs> but in the process, we'd like started a running blog called We Run for Cupcakes. And we <laughs> had so much fun writing these blogs that I finished that race. And I was a week later and I was like, okay, what race am I doing next? A week later? Yeah, it was a week later. It was like by the time the soreness goes away from like running an untrained race (laughs) and then went from there. I ran a half that following spring and my first full marathon like the fall of that year. It just escalated real quick. Like you just went full, full throttle. But same with you where you're like, okay, I started coaching friends. Mine was like friends, family, friends of friends. And then I was like, hmm. Probably get certified. Yeah, probably should get certified if I'm going to coach these people. (laughs) Yeah. And the rest is history. That's awesome. Like starting out with that love of movement and seeing how much it helps. For me, it was like that mental health piece too. A hundred percent. It was so bad. Like when my kids are little, sometimes they still do it to me and my husband too. But like, if I was like grumpy, extra, like snappy or whatever, they'd be like, mom, I think you need to go for a run. (laughs) Yes. They caught on that. That is definitely like a mental help for me is to like get out and move my body in that way. I'm just trying not to like crack up laughing on my microphone over here but like (laughs) same to the point like Blake will come and hand me my shoes and so he won't even say anything and it's not like hey you're being a jerk or you're being grumpy it's like you just need to do this I think a run might be a good idea 
you know, or mm-hmm. a lift at this point, like knowing how much it's going to benefit. And in fact, when we first started dating, one of my best friends, she told my husband, she's like, if Jess is ever grouchy, she needs one of three things. She needs some kind of workout, whether that's a run or a lift. She needs food or she needs sleep or a combination. It is up to you to figure that out, but I can guarantee you it's one or a combination of those three. Blake will tell you to this day, it has not steered him wrong. Yeah, that's fair. So he started always having snacks in like the center console of his car. <laughs> Here you go, you're being grumpy. <laughs> Fix it. Yeah, my husband makes fun of me because I leave food in my glove box. That's smart though. And especially with all of your long distance running. Yeah. How many times do you get back to the car and you're like, all right, what's in the glove box? Yes, I'm so hungry. Yeah, I will eat anything. something now. Yes, yes, exactly. Give me the snacks. Okay, so what is on your race schedule? Because you ran a 50K in the fall. No, it was in, I guess it was later in that year that I trained for the 50K because I remember it being cold, like into 2021. Okay. Because I think it was in March of 2021 because I remember just like being cold. There were like icicles on my eyelashes, like that was how training went but also we were four people in a tiny house at the time like my husband was trying to work the kids were going to school and then i was just sitting there because you know my business was like had imploded yeah because the gym closed right and so i was like i need to do something so that sounded like something smart to do challenge your body and your brain (laughs) i love it train for 50k (laughs) it was it's like rails to trails Okay, yeah. That so was relatively flat. If That's I'm awesome. going to do a 50K, I'm not going to do a technical course. That's just what I know about myself. That's fair. I can do yeah. shorter races on technical courses, but... That. Mm-mm. Okay. What's on deck for 2024? Yeah. I don't know. I might be doing a 50K in April, but we'll see. This um, latest freeze, I'm like, maybe I don't want to do this anymore. It's the training through the winter that is hard. Even though I have the treadmill, then I get tired of that. Yeah. So that's my plan right now. We'll see if it changes. That's what's feeling feeling good right now. But the winter is like the only time I really have to focus on my training because my kids play competitive. Uh, my daughter plays softball. My son plays baseball. Okay. But like once or April hits, we're busy. I know you do treadmill running. So you yes. have that as part of your... So when it freezes, that's where you're at. Yep. How do, where you, I'm at. how do you keep yourself entertained on the tread? So what I like to do on the treadmill is I'll give myself a show that I can watch, but only when I'm on the treadmill. Like so it. that kind of motivates me. Like if I want to see what happens, hopefully it's a good show. If I want to see what's happening next in the next episode or whatever, then I have to go down there and get on the treadmill. I love it. That's kind of what I've been doing too. Yep. Yeah. I was watching last week or earlier this week, I watched the Kevin Hart special. I do not recommend that though, because I almost fell off the treadmill from laughing. <laughs> I did it. I got me through my run. <laughs> that's, I was going to say, right? You're like bracing your arm rails on your treadmill. <laughs> yes. like keeping yourself exactly under. what's happening. I, trying not to die. I'm trying to remember. It was like 2017. We started having pretty bad fires here. Mm-hmm. And I was relegated to training for a marathon on a treadmill. And I watched all of This Is Us. Wow. Apparently not all of like, but like how much does that show make you cry? Oh. And at the time we were like in our condo and I, we had our treadmill on the loft and I, I'd be like <laughs> sobbing while <laughs> I'm still running. And then like my husband would come upstairs and he's like, Jess, are you okay? Like what happened? And I'm like, the, the, like the show and I'm pushing the show. at the... <laughs> yeah. But hey, you know what? The distraction piece of being on a treadmill, like... If it makes the time fly, yeah. it's worth it. 100%. Whatever it takes to get through it, right? I'll tell you, though, if the show's not doing it, I will bust out early 2000s pop or rock. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, the go-to playlist of just obnoxious music and then just, like, yes. zone out for the last 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I am on long runs. If I run by myself, like, outside, 90s, to early 2000s hip-hop and R&B. Yes. I love it. Always. Gets me um, through. Okay, so talking a little bit along the lines of Sturdy Girl and just delving into a little bit about maybe like body image or confidence or resilience, do you feel like running has helped you in any way with like your relationship with yourself or with your body over the years? And we were talking a little bit about that mental health piece. Right, 100%. I think 
When I have those tough days, I just reflect on like what my body has been able to do, regardless of what size it's been. I mean, you know, COVID was hard, gained some weight, perimenopause is here, so that's fun. Not knowing your body. Yeah. And so I try when I get in that headspace to focus on that, like what my body is capable of, all the miles that it's carried me through, all the races, how much I can lift or, you know, I take pride in my lifting. I see your like (laughs) four times speed lifts on Instagram, you know? Yeah. I'm like, do, 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 make them so fast. Yeah. And then also for me as a mom, like That also helps me, especially for like the running when the running gets hard. I tap into that like you've had kids, you can finish this half marathon or you can finish this marathon or whatever. That's crazy. Like I grew up kind of similar to you. I had two sisters. They're both tiny in like stature and they're thin. (laughs) So I'm the tallest and I have the biggest body. Not to say that I'm like, I'm like straight sized, you know, and my mom was very thin too when I was growing up. So like, even though no one, my mom never made me feel a certain way about my body or anything like that i don't even think my sisters did really but it was still like because of when, when we grew up messaging, yeah, like, right this is the messaging white blonde blue eyed tiny mm-hmm. this is the american standard you ma'am are none of those things and my mom actually is she's white blue eyed so that was a whole other thing it's like well why didn't i get any of that the whole right. mind how do you feel like that impacted like growing up and like combating those messages I mean, it was hard. I played sports, I played basketball, volleyball, so that definitely helped. Still, so like the physical movement piece of just, mm-hmm. you know, without being ableist, but like focusing on the things that you, your body can do, right. your body's done do. the things you asked. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and when you're playing sports, for the most part, right, we could get into a whole discussion of like a typical runner's body and like that whole thing. Right. But I feel like in high school, in those pieces of playing sports, the way your body looks or the size of your body isn't necessarily something that ends up being at the forefront. Right, it didn't as, matter as, as much. much anyways. Yeah, 100%. You're out there working on skills based practice instead of that yes in our high school we had i think it was the first year they had it but our assistant basketball coach started a women's weightlifting class so that was a lot of fun and really empowering to like be able to lift in the weight room at the school but it just be all females so we didn't have to take it and deal with the guys and all the comes with lifting that. <laughs> yeah the bro <laughs> lifting their comments the weird look i mean you know high school is high school But I found that to be very empowering. And my daughter participates in something like that too at her school. That's awesome. I was going to ask, any insights on being a mom and navigating that piece of, I'm going to say having a daughter so we can talk more to women on Sturdy Girl, but like instilling the messaging of you're so much more than a body and talking about those pieces of working on that confidence because those teen years are so fraught so with hard. emotion and just not, na- I can't imagine navigating that. It's hard. I have to say for myself, like I always was aware of what I said and I don't think I've ever said anything negative about my body body in front of my daughter and I was very conscious of that and wanted to be sure that I didn't do that and I think it's been good I don't hear her say at least to me or in my earshot right she's strong she's been lifting since like when I taught classes at the Y and she was old enough to come at like nine years old she would come and take my classes so she's always been in that environment yeah and I just always try to preach you know like it's not about what your body looks like but what it can do and how beneficial movement is for your mental health as well as your physical health absolutely so i think i've done a decent job i don't know i probably You're screwed like, up so in other far, ways there hasn't been any crazy but, fallout so we'll keep rolling with I, it right but i feel like that's all parenting right like you try to leave your kids better than what you felt it was for you yeah absolutely it's all you can do don't know if i've succeeded but i'm trying it's cool to see both of your kids playing sports enjoying movement on a competitive yeah. level like that's really rad and for them to have seen the example of you running and strength training and teaching classes about the importance of movement through their whole lives yes that's yeah. really awesome do you mm-hmm. feel mm-hmm. like the strength training and or running component helped at all as far as like i want to say resilience but like that strength piece that mental strength piece especially i was just thinking about like you're talking about you did your first 5k you there were a couple years in between and then you kind of came back to it you started having kids in that period yes. of time that running was like your me time did that help with mental health and that resilience piece of returning to the challenges of being a new mom or the challenges in life like was it any kind of benefit in that realm 
A hundred percent. I tried to do my first half marathon. I was training and found out I was pregnant with my daughter. My mother, God love her, was always calling me like, are you sure you should be doing this? Like, are you sure this is okay for the baby? So eventually I was just like, I'm just going to stop. Does this go back to our conversation about choosing your battles? <laughs> yes, a hundred percent. Because, you know, she was coming from a good place and it was like, all she knew was the old science that was like, you should not get your heart rate above blah, 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 whatever they say to pregnant like women. We used to say to pregnant women. And so I stopped. And then after I had Ava... Obviously, I kept running and it did help because like I went from working in an office 50 to 60 hours a week to being home with this tiny little person. My husband travels a lot for work. So a lot of times it was just the two of us and that was an adjustment. So running, it got me out of the house and, you know, we would go to like parks and so I would run and then let her play. So it was kind of a thing that we did together. So I think it helped us bond. And then also it was just a place where if like I can get 30 minutes mentally I'll feel better and be a better mother to her. And then when I had my son, I decided, okay, I'm done having kids because I got one of each and I didn't want any more kids and I had hands. Mm hmm. And so, or to be outnumbered <laughs> as a parent. Right, exactly. And so that's when I started training for my first half. I think I ran my first half, like, he was like six months old, seven months old. Yeah, it's probably stupid in hindsight. I probably should have not went right back to running as soon as <laughs> I did. But I did it with my best friend, Jess, and another best friend from college, or two different best friends from college. And we did the half together. And when I say together, they were like, please leave me. <laughs> just just go. We'll see. You at the it's there's line. together and then there's like running side yeah. by side. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, please go. And I'm like, yeah. okay. I'm running a half in April with a couple of friends and they're like, are we running together? And I was like, probably not. No yeah. offense, but we can all do the race and we'll see each other at the finish line and go eat brunch afterwards. Right. But probably probably be solo. <laughs> it happens that way sometimes. Okay. I want to ask, and I was sitting here trying to formulate like how I wanted to ask about being a run coach and your experience with helping people build their confidence in running. But I was trying to think of how I wanted to like word that question since I also coach runners. And so I have all kinds of thoughts on this, but right. just the piece of like someone comes to you and says, Amber, I want to run a half marathon. I am scared shitless, but it's a goal of mine that I have set. Like my big giant goal for 2024 is to run and a half where do I start and so you get this piece of like I want to say insecurity but someone hasn't built a skill in running or built that mental resilience piece that is equally as important as the physical training of a half tell me about the experience of getting to help cultivate that for me coaching whatever it is I always coach from a place of grace right like we have a plan but also you need to be kind to yourself and give yourself grace because a coach should not expect like 100% adherence right that's just not realistic so I come from give yourself some grace I like to use the 10 minute rule especially with new people give yourself 10 minutes go out there for 10 minutes or get on the treadmill for 10 minutes if you're still not feeling it then give yourself permission to stop it just wasn't a good day for you but most of the time what you're going to finish whatever you set up for the time you're out there, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Giving yourself the option to quit. I think that's really important. Yeah. For no matter if you've been doing it for a short time or a long time. Yeah. Sometimes when I have to convince myself, okay, all you need to do is like turn on the treadmill. Okay, you're moving. Okay, you're going to start running. Give it five minutes. Okay, give it 10. Like I kind of talk yeah. myself into it. And then I tell myself, all right, it's been 10 minutes. Do you want to quit? Like you can quit. And just giving yourself the option the to quit. The I'm going to say the illusion of choice because nine times out of 10, you're like, Oh, I'm here. Right. Oh, I'm keep, gonna going. keep going. Yeah. yeah. It helps you to feel more empowered in the decision that you're making to continue it. So I think that's awesome. I use that on myself too. Like, all right, I'm going to go out here and I'm going to run 10 minutes. And then if I don't feel like it, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to walk myself back. Mm hmm. I can't think, I can think of very few times where it was just actually like, yeah, you don't need to be out here. Like bad sleep or I hadn't eaten enough or whatever the case may be. But usually I'm going to finish the run or the lift or whatever it is. But for people that are just starting out, I like to focus a lot on the why, right? Why are you doing this race or whatever it is? Because that's what we have to tap back into. When it gets hard, why are we doing this? Because you don't have to, that's the thing, like you don't have to do this. Neither one of us have to be here doing this. No. So this was you, right? Like you had your reason. And so at some point you're going to have to learn to tap into that because I can't do that for you, right? When it gets hard, what are you going to do? And that's not even new runners. I think about that with like marathoners that I coach. It's that mm -hmm. upper mileage. When you're like, I'm 20 miles in, I'm 21 miles in. 
what the heck am I doing out here? Hmm? This hurts. I'm tired. I'm hungry. I don't want to eat any more goo gels. I <laughs> hate this. I don't ever want to run again. And if you have a strong why, it's going to keep you going. Even as something as simple as like, I ran my first marathon because I was curious if I could do it. And I was like, can I do this? Purely curiosity was my why. Was like well i ran a half i ran a second half mm -hmm. this marathon said it's pretty hard but i'm pretty tough at least i think i am so let's see how let's that goes why would i and so it was like why would i quit that now and that's the other thing i think too when you talk about why is like people will get hung up on that like well my why isn't big enough it's not profound enough it doesn't have to be like... it just has to be personally mm -hmm. meaningful to you exactly on why you continue and i will tell you changing your body is not a strong enough not a, why. no it's not a strong enough way I was going to say, I don't know what conversations you've had with clients about that, but it's like, if no. someone comes to me and wants to run a race to lose weight, I won't coach them. And yeah. maybe we have the conversation to explore other reasons why, but most of the time I'll say, I'll say no. Yeah, I'm not the coach for you. No, because first of all, long distance running, it's not, yeah. that's not the weight loss secret, you know? Right. No, it's uh, but not. But also, that's not going to keep you going when, when shit gets hard. Exactly. Even in the weight room, like the same thing. It's like, well, I want to lose weight, but what else? There's got to be another reason. It can't just yeah. be for that. Yeah. And like, usually there is. Like if you have that conversation mm -hmm. with someone and they say they want to lose weight, well, I want to lose weight because I want to feel like I have more energy. You I want, want to feel strong. I feel like you yeah. have, yeah. Why do you, why is that important to you? Well, I have kids and they are really active and I want to be able to keep up with them. And I want to be able to keep up with them my whole life instead of mm -hmm. not being able to get up and down off the floor comfortably or be able to jump on the trampoline or chase them around or whatever it is. And yeah. so then you uncover that it's not about the weight loss. It's what's underneath. Yeah. Let's There's tap into that. Yeah, right. right? And like... then have that conversation, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, 100%. But I like the fact that you coach from a place of grace because I feel like the messaging, especially in the like run coaching world, and it has shifted some. I mean, you've been coaching long enough that you probably worked through that of just the like grind hard, no days off. Let's train like a pro runner who runs six or seven days a week because that's how we get faster. And it's just the push hard. Everyone's running in kind of that middle zone, moderate effort and not getting any faster, getting any better, or they're burning out or those things. Mm -hmm. so to say, or they're getting injured. Yeah. I've seen and so many coaches that are just like, mileage is key and I'm just like that's why your athletes are always injured when is the break when is the cutback why is every run a workout why it aren't doesn't... we coaching in seasons like yeah. any other sport you know and I've been there like as a client and you know just as like coaching myself pushing and I'm, well, I have to run six days a week and why never miss a Monday I was that person for a while oh, same absolutely of course also I taught a spin class on Monday morning so I wasn't gonna miss a Monday because Teaching. Have you ever heard of Hansen's marathon method? Yes. Okay, I did that for three marathon cycles. Wow. Back to back. For the listeners who don't know what Hanson's Marathon Method is, the whole premise is to be able to learn to run on tired legs. So you run six days a week. You have one rest day, but your sixth day of running is a long speed workout. So it's like a combination of half mile and mile tempos with shorter one to two minute speed efforts. It is a lot. And I had multiple friends at the time who had Boston qualified using Hanson's Marathon Method. So mm -hmm. I was like, all right, I'm a believer. I see these friends do doing this and I ended up completely burning myself out I like didn't get in though not that time no I ended uh -huh. up with bronchitis and I ran Marine Corps Marathon with bronchitis and still completed it because that was my mentality at the time still showed up did the race and then was like I swore up and down I would never run again and I took six months off after that I'm glad you took break you needed oh, it my, like my body and brain wouldn't let me it was the weirdest form of burnout that I've ever experienced in my life. I would lace up my shoes to go for a run and I'd get outside and I'd start crying because I was like, this is hard. I don't like it. I don't want to do it. And it was that piece of going back to like giving yourself grace. I was like, this isn't the season. This is not the season. It's not worth it. Too. I mean, it you wasn't, know, like, no, we're not winning races. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm speaking for myself. Like I'm not winning races. No. I'm not placing. I'm just in the middle of the pack. Did it for enjoyment for a long time. Yes. And it, it had shifted away from that because it was all about like Boston qualifying to me. It was that like going back to giving yourself grace of what season you're in and just mm -hmm. like moving away from. And I'm trying to even think like what got me back into running. But one of the hardest parts, I think stepping away from that much running, and I don't know if you can identify with this at all, was my identity was so tied up in running. Mm. 
and being a runner and being a run coach and chasing this Boston qualifying dream and posting every one of my runs online and on Strava and everything that went with that, it was such a hard shift to then realize like my identity exists outside of being a runner. Maybe I strength train too, but like I'm not really like, I don't really like that's not a thing. I'm not a lifter. I'm a runner. Well, but I haven't run in six months. So does that still make me a runner? And trying to detach from that piece. And and that I think was kind of the catalyst for me of doing the self work of being a person beyond like what I do or the things that I do productively in my life. Well, and that's hard in this industry, too, because, like, when I first started was the era of, like, your body is your business card, right? Like, I mean, it's still um, like that in some circles, though. Yeah, it is. I just, we've curated our, I think, online yeah, communities. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I don't see that anymore. But, like, no, it's not. My body's not my business card because I could be buff and tough and not have any knowledge whatsoever but okay. i'm gonna sell you this plan because you want to look like i look so i'm gonna take advantage of that i'm gonna sell you my six pack exactly and it's like that's, that's so stupid my body doesn't tell you anything about my education my certifications like what kind I of a person i am none of that no but i i, I used to believe that i almost ran myself into the ground trying to keep up with it yeah yeah so agreed but going back to that piece of like having that runner give themselves grace they're showing up they're they're really connecting with their why are there other things that you would give as advice for building that that resilience piece and like I think mean, about the things you say to your clients like all the time i mean like sometimes in class this isn't so much as running but i think it also applies when people are like this is really hard and i'm like well you didn't come here for easy like no one chooses to be a runner because it's going to be easy running's not easy oh. i don't feel like it ever gets easy you just get better at it right yeah when i have people say that in class i just laugh at them like you didn't come here for easy like if you wanted it to be easy you wouldn't have showed up for my class you would have gone to like the restorative yoga flow (laughs) right or you would have came here by yourself and did like five minutes of something and you would have went back to your desk or whatever it's gonna be hard just like life i mean to me running is is an analogy for life like what are you gonna do when it gets hard do you quit do you or do you keep pushing it's knowing yeah. when to quit and when to push through. Yes. Yeah, and that's not to say like, oh my gosh, you are starting the injury push through. Like, it's the point no. of like, running is hard. If you've run at all, you know how hard it is to go from like detrained and training all of those body systems to get on board to running a half, to running a full, to running ultras, to whatever it is, to people who do like obstacle course races, which just blow my mind. It's hard. And it's looking at that like mental resilience piece of it. How do you continue to show up? It's building the skill of exposing yourself to I think the research calls it like a just manageable challenge and so that's where like you know talking to you as a run coach knowing how to program people to progress is you're exposing them continually to that just manageable challenge where whether it's like increasing volume or distance or speed or those pieces or learning to run at a steady state it's knowing how to progress that to expose people to it and I'm a big believer of like the 80-20 rule, especially when it comes to running. Like most of your runs should be easy, you know, easy being relative, right? Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Holding yes. up my 80-20 running book. Yeah, same. Yes. <laughs> Just running ourselves into the ground. Like for what? I actually had a coaching call with a client this morning. She's run, I can't even tell you how many marathons. She's doing 50 states. That's so she amazing. does a, a few a year but like we were talking and she hasn't run in like probably a month she's like i can't get back into my my habits and like i'm beating myself up and i'm like why are you beating yourself up though you literally ran four marathons you took a month off it's okay your body and brain that's need that's the statement so like here's what we're gonna do we're gonna throw a few 20 minute runs in here and then get your long run in because that's the other, that's one piece of it too is like when i wasn't running for those six months i was still like going for walks going for hikes i started biking having other mm-hmm. forms of movement just trying those other things that aren't running and mm-hmm. leaving it totally unstructured yes that's great but it's such, something a, new. it's such a hard thing i feel like running attracts more type a personalities type a, and mm-hmm. more of those like if it's on the schedule people I'm pleasers getting it done. perfectionists mm-hmm. yeah 
Yeah, and that's really, yep, <laughs> same, recovering perfectionist. And it's so hard to let go of that sometimes and be in that season of like, okay, what does my body need? Like, clearly there's a lot of resistance here to this movement. What is something that I might enjoy? How do I show up in a Try way that else. honors my body's need for movement, my brain's need for movement, but it's not something that I am completely dreading. Right, that I, that I don't feel like doing. And especially with your client, like making yeah. the goal to run in all 50 state race in all 50 states and then be like, oh, I just ran four marathons, but like, why don't I want to run? Right, and like we get in this shame cycle, like you yeah. shame yourself because you're not doing the run and then you don't do the run because you're shaming yourself because you didn't do the run or the workout or the nutrition or whatever it is like you have to get out of that just so it like, happened let's move let's let's start again here's yeah. the starting line yeah, we just move it what's the movement that you enjoy that's mm -hmm. what's really important Yep. I was just thinking of our confidence. It's just mm -hmm. the building confidence in something, the skill in something. So talking about running, I'm trying to remember where I was reading it, but it was talking about creating habits in your life. And whether those habits are like improving your running, improving your lifting, if it's creating the habits or in drinking more water or eating more fruits and vegetables or whatever that they were like, don't create the habit as if you're showing up on your best day. Create habits and routines that you can do even on your worst days. Like what are the things you can follow through on on the shittiest of days? And that's what's going to set yourself up for growth and being able to yes. say, okay, here's my baseline. What are my non-negotiables? And then how can I build on that? And I just thought it was really interesting because we do, like for me, when I was sitting down and thinking about what do I want for 2024? What are my goals? Like signed up for this half with my friends. We're actually, we're running the Maui half marathon in April. So we're making it like a long girls weekend, which I'm really excited about. But it was like, okay, what? I mean, have this goal to run a half. Obviously, I need to run. I need to have figure out my run plan. I need to start experimenting with like what shorts I can run in because I haven't run in shorts in ages and it's going to probably be warm over there when we yep. run. And like Let breaking me know that if you all need down. Some suggestions. And then just being like, okay, when I'm tired, when I'm working long days, how am I still able to show up? And honestly, sometimes those days are shorty little runs where it is that point of getting on the treadmill and being like, what can we do today? How can we show up? And then building from that. But that's yeah. just my tangent. Sorry. I was just thinking no, about that fine. piece of this like seasons approach of just how to show up and building like I, that's I guess my point being like building that confidence, building that skill and that almost self trust of being able to show up and then trusting yourself enough. So when you have those days or you have those weeks or those that actual like full season of I'm not showing up how I normally do you mm -hmm. trust yourself enough to know like there's something else going on here I'm freaking burnt out from running endlessly or for me it was powerlifting I hurt my shoulder and I've had to rehab that and just kind of modify volume there for the first half of fall last year like I had no desire to run and so I just started getting on the bike it sounded fun doing peloton classes sounded great it sounded great to get on the bike and do hills and read a book at the same time and so that's what I did like it that's talent well, I mean, it was more like, you know, we're talking about watching Netflix on the treadmill and that piece yeah. of distraction. That was how I'd be like, I really want to finish this book tonight. Well, I'm going to get on the bike um, and I can finish the book, you know, and like have yeah. those, what do they call it? Temptation bundling. So I like bring together the desire to read my book for movement that I want to and know I need to get in and like pair them together. I do that a lot. It's fun. I think for new people also stressing that walking does not not make you a runner. Like when you take walking breaks but, during running? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Because I can think back to like when I became a runner, there was no way I could walk during a run. Yeah, because then you, Did, you didn't failed. Count. I was the same way. <laughs> like I remember, I want to say curating my runs for when I'd like post the watch shot on social so that it would like mm -hmm. be a faster pace because I wouldn't put like I'd stop my watch when I'd walk. So I wouldn't tell anyone, oh my God, I had to walk up that huge hill to get back to my house. I'd just like stop it. In hindsight, That's I'm like, stupid. that was okay. We call those roadrunner things, no? Like the yeah, difference totally. between roadrunners and trail, trail runners. runners. Like, oh yeah. I'm going to hike this hill. I'm going to spend two, eight minutes at this H day soon eating pickles and watermelon because that sounds delicious. Trail running is just so, is so different. Mm. I've had a few runners in the last year, a few, a few of my athletes transition in from road to trail and never want to go back doing their mm -hmm. first trail race and they're like there's real food at aid stations people walk up the hills like wh what is this 
craziness or when we're like training for the race and they're like well you know when I, i'm gonna eat on this this run like i'm gonna need 37 goo gels and i'm like let's talk about some real food options mm -hmm. not actually 37 but you know what i mean yeah i know what you mean <laughs> and i'm like trust me gummy candy is gold like let's play around with these things and, and get curious but oh my gosh yeah you transition over and you're like it can be fun Although yep. I've still never been able to eat pretzels. Like the pretzels are always at aid stations on trail races. Too dry. Just... I'm like, no, I'll just take the pickles things. Mm-hmm. I get the same sodium. It is better. wild how good pickles and pickle juice <laughs> Pickle is juice, yes. On, on long runs. Oh my yeah. god. Anyways, okay, I wanna go off on a tangent about how much I love trail running <laughs> for the simple fact that like you get to eat candy yes. and PB and J's and like cold pizza and flat coke and you're like, This yes. is the life. I think one other piece to wrap up just talking about new runners and building that physical and mental resilience piece is keep showing up, keep getting curious. That's the biggest thing that I feel like when I ask you, like, what do you say to your clients all the time? That is something that I say to my clients, whether they're new or have been with me for years, is be curious, stay curious. One of my clients, we just started reincorporating speed work. We're kind of in off season and we're going to transition fairly soon into training for a fast 10K. And in the past, speed work has been very structured. And so this time around, like we're just starting with strides. And mm -hmm. I was like, take a deep breath and just get curious. You're going to pick five times to run for 20 seconds at moderate pace and then go back down to easy right. pacing. There's no pacing requirements. Just get curious with your body. See what feels good. See what feels fun. Think about a little kid like racing across the field and just use that. Get curious mm -hmm. of what your body's capable of to be able to keep showing up for yourself instead of letting it be something that's a box to check on your to-do list. Yeah. Strides are the best way to, in or to introduce with the correct instructions, right? Yes. Because yeah. most people see it and then they're like, oh, I get a sprint. No, no we don't have I to sprint. I this? <laughs> okay, let's go. Zone five. No, stop it. I know, right? Did you have any other thoughts along the lines of building body confidence for runners or lifters or people trying to move their bodies better? I think trusting the process. Pick the plan, hopefully a coach, but if you pick a plan, you got to be realistic about where you're at, right? I feel like sometimes pick, people pick those free plans that they find and it's like, I'm going to do this intermediate half marathon plan. I'm like, but you're not an intermediate runner. And those like, you plans need the beginner. have you running five days a week when you haven't been running at all? Yeah, so once you find a plan that's doable, just trust the process. I think that's the hardest part sometimes, especially when you get to longer races and wanting to see progress right away yeah. or have things feel tangibly better when if it's your first race in a while or your first long distance run in a while it's like it doesn't get easier very quickly and then sometimes like one in 15 runs you get that magical run that you're like <laughs> that's what I'm i was gonna say floating. I love tap this into so that much. one <laughs> yes exactly like there's always that one and then you gotta just remember that feeling and carry yeah. it with you yeah otherwise find good audiobooks podcasts music oh yeah find those things as a uh, way to get through i listen to handmaid's tale when i train for my 50k wow would have been a fun <laughs> one i go for the rom-coms that are just ridiculously easy to be able to like listen and to cheesy and along with yeah, yeah completely that's cheesy. probably a better decision i Although, wouldn't, I I wouldn't would... advise people to pick handmaid's tale for that <laughs> I was, I remember last year when I was training for a half, I was running a paved bike path and I got to this really spicy scene in this rom-com and I'm like, looking around, this is okay, no one can hear this, but Jess, geez, okay, <laughs> just keep running. A lot during the run. Uh -huh. Yeah, right, I'm like, is it warm? No, it's like 35 <laughs> degrees, but I feel a little warm with this jacket on and okay. Skip this part. Yeah, I might need to fast forward. Okay, this actually leads me into kind of our like wrap up rapid fire questions. What is the number one book you recommended or given as a gift? Michelle Obama's Becoming. I love it. And I, I say the audiobook. Because doesn't she narrate? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's fantastic. It's good. No, Dad. What is your favorite kind of cookie? Chocolate chip. Does it matter if it's hard or soft or crunchy or... Soft in the middle. Crunchy on the outsides? Yeah, a little bit of crunch on the outside. You're my kind of girl. That's my favorite too. <laughs> <laughs> what is... This might be a giveaway. What is one activity that brings you joy and takes away attention from your body? Definitely running. But I would say lifting too. Okay, last question. How do you take your coffee, besides in a regular mug, put into <laughs> in your <my> car. <laughs> cup holder in your car? 
open cup in the car always no it depends if i'm going to a coffee shop then i like to get a latte with honey and cinnamon yum if i'm at home honestly i drink black coffee more often than not sometimes i'll put a little creamer in there honey and cinnamon sounds like such a warm combination i like that oh it's so good it's fantastic okay well where can our audience find you and learn more about your coaching instagram at soul strings kc or my website is soulstrengthkc.com thanks so much for joining us today for chatting about running and lifting and all things physical and mental resilience this has been fun thank you thank you for having me